Morning po. Morning word of praise. Good morning po sa lahat. Morning. Welcome po. Morning. Welcome po sa ating live service via Zoom. So, let me read um a verse from before tayo mag-start from the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Sabi doon, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So God is faithful sa life ng bawat sisa sa atin. And His love never cease. And yun, let us enjoy the... New morning that God has given to us. Let us enjoy the love that we experience every day. And let us enjoy the faithfulness of God. Let me start with this um, as we pray to start our service today. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness in our life. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your love that we experience, Lord God, every day, Panginoon. And we lift up to you, Lord God, everything that we have, Lord. We lift up our life to you. We lift up even our service today, Panginoon. And Lord, thank you, Father God, dahil alam namin, Panginoon, na meron kaming babaunin, Lord God, from your word, Panginoon. Alam namin, Lord God, that our hearts, Lord God, will be filled with your spirit, Panginoon. And we thank you, Lord God, for your greatness, Lord, in our life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ayan. So. Let's start as we um, enjoy singing songs and worshiping God uh, to be led by our worship team. Now is the time to worship our God. Amen. Expect greater grace and miracle today. Hallelujah. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty? And so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and lifts us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. sing for all that you've done for me Whoa, oh, 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 oh. who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace
worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Oh, worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain
with trumpet sound Who oh, may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Lord, we praise you, Father. We praise your name, Lord. We lift your name on high, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. We are blessed to worship God. And now let's us proceed in our communion. And I believe we prepare our elements for our communion. And may I call Sister Citas to lead us in communion. God, we bless you. We thank you that we can come together and remember what Christ has already done for us by taking this Holy Communion. I lift up these elements, precious Father. I ask you to bless these elements. And I ask you first, Lord, to forgive us of our sins in thoughts, in words, and in deeds, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that as, as I break this bread, I lift up to this bread and I break it. It reminds me that Christ's body was broken. He was beaten up violently that I may have light in my body and the, the thorns of the, the crowns on his thorns were for the emotions and, you know, for the mind and even our emotions in our soul. So I thank you, precious father. Thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes, we are healed and we choose to believe the report of the Lord. We bless you. We thank you as we stand in your promise, as we stand in this covenant. Thank you that it is manifesting in our lives and in our bodies that by his stripes we are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take it. And Father, as I lift up to this cup, it is the cup of uh, the blood covenant. Without the blood, there's no shedding of the, of, of, there's no remission of sins. And without the blood, Lord, we cannot have uh, a life with you. So we thank you for the precious blood, that we have a blood covenant. And because of what Christ has done, that we are seated in the heavenly places and it says in there that, that every spiritual blessing belongs to us because of what Christ has already done. So we thank you for the cross the, and we thank you for the blood, precious Father, that we do have a blood covenant with you. We bless you. We thank you, Father God, in Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Paul, Sister Citas. So we welcome po again yung mga ngayon lang po namin nakasama. Good morning po. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. And let's proceed po sa ating tithes and offering. Uh, may call on Ate Jean to lead us. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So we now come to the part of the service where we give our offering and our tithes and offering. Now, I would like to exhort you in a few things. For example, number one, giving generously blesses others and also positions us to receive blessings as well. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, it says, but this I say, 
he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Now, Paul taught us proportional giving. He said that what, what we should give should be proportional to what God has given to us. Therefore, no matter what season we are in financially, we are able to give generously. So we need to say, oh, mas marami siyang pera. So we should give, you know, siya na lang ang magbigay. No, no. If, if God has given us that part that we're in, we can give whatever it is that we have. Now, our harvest is in direct proportion to what we give. God wants us to give from what we live on, not just from the tiny sliver of our surplus. Hindi po siya surplus. So if we give much, we receive much. If we give little, we receive little. Okay, you can finish that of verse 6. Next is the primary purpose for money is to bless others. The reason that God is blessing us is to bless others. Paul taught us that any money that comes into, into a believer's life should take on the form of bread, which is something to consume, and seed, which is something to be given. Money should be thought of as a seed before you can use it as bread. So whenever we receive money, where it be given to us or we earned it from our salary, the first thing we should think of it, it is a seed before then we can use it as bread. Okay, 2 Corinthians 9, 10, for God is the one who provides seed for the former and then bread to eat. In the same way, he'll provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. And then grace-based giving involves making a conscious decision to give out of compassion for others. So let giving flow from your heart, not a form of or a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves a hilarious giver. Second Corinthians 9, 7, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly, okay? Or in response to pressure. Baka pressure kayo. Every time in service, merong thanks and offering. Di po? For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So when we give, do it with a smile and also your ating puso is rejoicing as we give because if you can give, that means you are blessed. Amen. So let's pray and lift up your uh, phones or whatever you have for your before you press your Gcash. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have blessed us first. That's why we can give. Thank you that you first gave Jesus to us and now we are able to give as well in grace. Father, be glorified in our giving. Use this for your purposes here on earth. We thank you that it's you who will provide seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And because of this, we can give joyfully and cheerfully, knowing that you are our source, our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yan po, nakikita nyo na naka-flash sa screen yung ating um, account sa Maybank and BPI. Okay, and we welcome po again kay Brother Sal, kay Sister Angie, and kay Teacher Karine. Welcome po sa Word of Grace. Ayan, thank you. Thank you, Ate G. And now let's prepare our heart and mind as we listen to the Word of God. Um, our speaker for today is a person na nakilala ko who live by faith and not by sight. Talaga namang um, nakakatuwa yung life niya kasi he she really ano put her trust to the lord uh, she is the ministry head ng children's ministry and her life is a blessing even nung pandemya um isang goal niya is to bring the church to the children and nakaka-bless kasi kahit malalayo yung mga lugar nila eh talagang pinupuntahan niya yun she is a blessing let me call ati jenny villanueva Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you for that very wonderful introduction. <laughs> Na-bless ako doon. Amen. Praise God. So, good morning, everyone. Let's pray po muna. So, we have the word for today. And it's entitled, The Living Bread That Satisfies. So, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for this day. Today is a celebration, Panginoon, of your goodness, of your faithfulness, of your loving kindness, Panginoon, that uh, your love endures forever. We thank you and we glorify you. Let your word, Lord God, be preached today in the message of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Reach our hearts, Lord, and our minds, Panginoon, that it will grow, Lord, and become become a, a fruit-bearing tree, Lord, that will really produce fruits and much fruit, Panginoon. We thank you for today. Bless it, each and every one of us. Open our spiritual eyes and our spirit ears to receive from you today. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So good morning, everyone. So in my younger years, um, I was raised up as a Christian and pastor's kid. They call me PK or MK missionary kid. So every time there is, you know, um, memory verse recitation, they will ask me, what is your life verse? So maybe you came up to that um, situation already or events that you were asked of, what's your life verse or your favorite verse? So there's one, um, because of that, I just, you know, I was forced, <laughs> I was forced, you know, to really memorize a verse before my turn, before my turn comes. <laughs> so I have to memorize this verse. And until, until um, from then on, until now, it is my favorite and life verse. Hallelujah. And it is so living and so alive. The word of God. So it is in First Peter chapter twenty p or chapter twenty chapter one verses twenty four to twenty five, but I will start in verse twenty three. It says, "For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all the people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall." But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So it is so really, um, it's, I started really to love the word of God and really to really um, study the word and memorize verses from that time on. So that's why I also, you know, um, when I teach children, I always wanted them and encouraged them to really love the word and memorize the verses. So um, the word here is, it talks about Jesus. In John chapter 1, verse 1, when Christ comes to the world, it says, In the beginning there was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The word in the Greek word is logos, meaning any kind of communication. It could be translated message. Here in John 1, 1, it means Christ because Christ was the way God told people about himself. Jesus is the eternal message, the creative word and the living expression of God made visible. He is the divine self-expression of all that God is, contains and reveals in incarnated flesh. Just as we express ourselves in words, God has perfectly expressed himself in Christ. Jesus is God's love story revealed to us. We know the story in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was um, tested by the devil, when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and the Spirit brought him to the wilderness. That left Jesus, of course, in a state of extreme hunger. The devil was ready to give him a, a test and took advantage of it in the first test. He said, since you are God's son, Speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. So in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, since you are God's son, speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 23 in the message paraphrase. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. So God had not given permission to turn stones into bread, and Jesus would not push into prematurely demonstrating his power by that time. He was content with the timing of his father. 
So Jesus refused to turn stones into bread to feed himself, but he multiplied bread for his hungry followers. Today, Jesus is still turning hearts of stone into living bread that would fill the nations with truth. So in, in, in the Passion Translation of Matthew 4, 4, the scriptures say, Bread alone will not satisfy, but true life is found in every word that constantly goes forth from God's mouth. Man will not live by bread alone. Nothing can satisfy the son's appetite but the words of God. I, I always, um, you know, listen um, worship song um, from Spotify. And this really like a love song, a love song to the Lord. The, the title of the song is You Satisfy My Soul by Laura Hackett Park. But you know, it was already sung by our worship team several times by Sister Casey. Um, the title is You Satisfy My Soul. And these are the lyrics that I really, you know, um, encourage me and really like singing love song to the Lord. He says, you satisfy my soul with your love. You make my my heart sing. You lift me on eagle's wings. Just when I thought that my heart, it would faint. Just take the darkest night and turn it into shining light. Just when I thought that the night had won. You satisfy my soul. Only God and only Jesus can satisfy our soul. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 12, this is the Lord's prayer. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It means let your name be treated with reverence. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It also means give us this day and our bread for tomorrow. So when, when you know the Lord, when we ask the Lord, he doesn't only meet our needs, but he also give our wants, not just for today, but also for tomorrow. When Jesus tells you pray, give us this day our daily bread, he's talking about far more than just bread. It's not the, you know, the physical bread. You know, ako po mahilig ako sa tinapay. And one of my favorite stores of tinapay that, you know, pag, before it closes, before closing time of that store, um, may pila na because 50% off. So I really, and I choose all my favorite bread from that um, from that store. So sobrang ano ako, nag-i-enjoy ako dun sa mga gusto kong tinapay. So, but of course, the bread that we're talking here is the bread for our spirit and for our soul. In fact, the Bible says the, the bread represents four things. The first one is the bread represents God's supply. So when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, with that you don't sit on the couch and wait for God to throw you, you money. But remember, the first line of the prayer, our Father, there is relationship of Father and children. Amen. So even before we ask our Father, He knows already your need. Hallelujah. Prayer is communicating to our Father and resting in His words and in His promises. That's why in Psalms 23 verse 1, this is one of my favorite, um, my favorite um, verses or scripture in the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Other translation says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. If you have everything that you need, what, what else do you need? What else? Meron pa ba? Let your kingdom come. It means let your kingdom come. Let the economy of heaven come on earth. We command the money to come. Can we do that? Can we command the money to come? Amen. Yes. Because we have the authority that God has already given to us. Amen. Let the economy of heaven come on earth. We command the money to come. We command the money of the wicked to be transferred to the hands of the righteous. Amen. That's how God will work. You know, the things that we cannot, cannot see, 
uh, with the least that we can expect, but God can create and supply, deliver the supply for us. And then that God says, I supply it and you gather it. That is God's economy. Even the Israelites had to go out and pick up the manna. Remember the story when, when the Lord um, sent them manna from heaven? Work is part of God's purpose for your life because it builds your character. It, it really builds your patience and your faith on God, depending on God. You know, I have this testimony that uh, I applied for a job. You know, I applied for a job. I, you know, I printed many, as in many uh, resume, and then I just sent it and then just sent it online. So I want, I want, you know, the Lord, um, I, I told to the Lord, Lord, um, whoever um, will um, call me or give me a text for an interview that would be coming from you. And after two weeks, I just waited and nobody returns a call or even, you know, text, texted me. So I decided, I said, I'll go to the, I go to the nearest um, place where I applied and then make a follow up of my resume. And then immediately I got a prompting from the Lord. He said, you said uh, I will be the one to handle it. And now you're doing something for that. And then I was, you know, really prompted by the spirit. And then I just said, okay, Lord, I won't go to that place. I won't follow up my application. I will just sit back and relax. And, you know, it is your hand that will work for me. So, um, soon enough, there was, a, there was one that texted me for a scheduled um, interview, praise the Lord. And then I waited, and then he never came back. He never came back and returned for my scheduled interview. So I said, Lord, why is it like that? It's already, you know, scheduled already, but still. And then I said, okay, Lord, I will let you, I will let you work for me. I will rest on you and ikaw na bahala. So, and then after few, after, just after um, two days, after two days, there was somebody who called me and contacted me and then said, Jenny, I want you to work for my company part-time because that's my prayer. I, I want to work part-time because I want also to devote my time with the ministry for the kids. And then the part-time, and then this is my offer. I will send you immediately. I never applied for that, for that company. But it is the Lord hand that applied for me. Hallelujah. It is the bread, the living bread, you know, God supply. God is my provider. You know, if you are really looking for a job, God's thought is higher than your thoughts and God's ways is higher than your ways. Just keep trusting the Lord. Just keep trusting. He can create a spot just right for you. He just can create and bring, you know, position just right for you. Only you that can feel that, you know, that um, plantilla or whatever manpower that this um, employer needs. You know, that's how God works. So he supply. So I just I just accepted it. Hallelujah! I receive it. So that's one of my um, testimonies. This is just one of my testimonies about God's supply for me. And then in Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse twenty three, hard work always pays off. Mere talks puts no bread on the table. So we are also called to work. So, but in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse eighteen, this is a good news. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, his, which he swore to your ancestors as it is to you today. Other translation, Bible translation said, for he who gives you the power to create wealth. Hallelujah. God is faithful and we should remember the Lord our God that he who gives us, who gives you the power to create wealth. He has given you the power 
to produce wealth. He has given you the power to gain wealth. And He has given you the power to be successful. If you're still waiting for a job or whatever you're waiting from God for the supply, He has already given you the power. Hallelujah. You just command. You just command the money. Use your authority in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer to your need. So it's not in the um, PowerPoint, but I would just like to share you Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, and this same God who takes care of me. I like, really like this um, translation in New Living. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. We are a children of God. Amen. We have relationship with God through Jesus. So in... You know, it also says here, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So, so the second one is the bread represents God's word. Okay, the first one, it's God supplied the bread, the living bread represents God's word. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, People do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. In John chapter 6, verses 32 to 35, Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. You know, people, um, it, you know, Christians, you know, believers, they sometimes um, must believe sila sa, sa ibang tao, you know. That's why it, of all, uh, it is, um, you know, um, reminded that truly, truly, it's not from Moses. It's not from people. It's not from the world, you know. It is by my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So Jesus said he is the bread of life. The word of God is our spiritual food. Amen. So when the children of Israel were walking to the promised land, God dropped manna from heaven because they had nothing to eat. But God wanted them and gave them bread to show them they needed more than the physical food to live, that they needed to depend on him. That's what also God, you know, is pleased when we put our faith in him, when we believe and we keep trusting in his word and in his promises. So real life comes by feeding on every word of the Lord. We don't just need physical nourishment. We need spiritual nourishment too. So in Joshua 1.9, it says, And don't for a minute let this book of the revelation, other says, book of the law, be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed. So it is also um, giving us that the success is in the word of God. Amen. It is in the living bread. It is through Jesus. Ponder means think about the word carefully. So when do we experience that when we read the word? We read it again, and then, you know, we think about it. That's, that's pondering. We think about it. Sometimes, mapapanaginipan pa natin, and we will memorize it. And then, hanggang, hanggang pa ulit-ulit na natin sinasabi, and until we sometimes give those words to other people to encourage them. So, especially before making a decision. So, pondering the word of God or meditate. Meditate in the Bible, the meaning is imagine, study, talk, or speak. So when we speak God's word, our faith is strengthened because said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your hope is restored. When we, when we meditate on the word, we become stronger on the inside. 
and it will manifest on the outside. Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I remember uh, in the Old Testament, those um, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, out of, uh, from slavery in Egypt. So what all those things happen, their deliverance from slavery is already God that moved and made miracles. And those things are being told and passed on from generation to generation. The, the, um, the people in the Old Testament, they really, the Jew really, you know, they really memorize, they chant. You know, they chant it, they chant it, and then, you know, other, um, the younger and the younger people will listen to it, and they will memorize it, and they will chant it again. So the word of God is like that. We need to chant, we need to repeat, we need to hear, we need to read, we need to study the word. Amen? It is living, it's powerful. So when we meditate on the word, it changes the way we think, you know? Because right thinking, right believing, and right living. So in Romans 12, verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this word, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You know, I... You know, um, many single, many single people. You know, always asking, Lord, the kanaman yung God's will. You know, um, Lord, um, kailang kaya darating yung God's will for me. So talking about the partner in life or the future wife or the future husband. You know, that's what we call God's will. You know, siya na ba Lord, the buying ganon. So if you're looking for forever. This is, this is good news for you. Only Jesus can feel the God-shaped blank in your heart. Amen. The only one who can truly satisfy the human heart is the one who made it, and it's God. Only Him that can satisfy our soul. Hallelujah. So when we read the word, we meditate on His word. One word from the Lord can change your life. Listen and to the word. You know, we, li we listen to the word during prayer time. We have faith seekers. We listen to the word during our devotion. We listen to podcasts, you know. We, we need to hear it. We need to hear it. There's a friend of mine that, you know, um, medyo malabo yung mata niya. So, ang ginawa niya para hindi niya ma-skip yung devotion niya, may audio, yung Bible na may audio app. Piniplay niya lang yon, piniplay ng piniplay. But it is the word of God that is powerful. It, it has power. It has power to each and every one of us. So the, the third thing is the bread represents God's family and fellowship. You know, being in the church, it's so powerful. There is a power in unity, in the fellowship of the beloved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, is the bread which we break not a sharing in the body of Christ? Bread is a metaphor for the family of God. You need God's people in your life. I need you. I need God's people who are here and who are not yet here. And you need me. <laughs> I know you need me. And I know I need you. Because God purposed us to be together. Amen? To be in one body. Whether, whether or not you have a physical family, God wants you to be a part of his family that will last forever, which is the church. God made it to be a place of fellowship. This is fellowship. Amen? I am in a word of grace family. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. So we are 22 here right now. So we, God is with us. Hallelujah. We are more than three. We are more than four. Okay, we are more than 21 because we're 22. Amen. So fellowship is not just something that we try to fit into a Christian life after we get everything else. Fellowship will challenge us. 
but it will also encourage us. Amen? The fellowship encourages us. Help us to be accountable, to stay accountable. The fellowship is showing obedience to God and His Word. So what is God's family called? It is the church. The church is the most magnificent idea God has designed for each one of us. The church is not a building. We all know that. The church is the family of God. We all are in the family of God. Amen? And he's going to take us to heaven to be part of his family forever. So it means that since we're all going to live together forever, wala kayong magagawa, but we better learn to get along. Hallelujah! I am into the fellowship of the believers. Hallelujah! Sorry, you're stick with me and I'm stick with you. <laughs> so that is church. Hallelujah! Where everything, everyone is encouraging. We are encouraged. We are built up. Amen. Every time we come together, we come together in unity. So while you're here on earth, you must love the family of God. I love the family of God. Hallelujah. So you want to know how much God loves the church? He died for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ died for the church. He wants us to learn to love and lean on every believer in the body of Christ. Because we need each other. I repeat, we need each other. Do you agree that we need each other? When we love and serve the church and work together to fulfill God's mission in the world. What is that mission? To populate heaven with souls. That is the church mission. That is every believer's mission is to populate heaven with souls. God has designed us to need each other. For what purpose? We need each other to help someone find hope. That's why Brother Efren shared, um, you know, shared last Sunday about hope and joy. And Sister Jean shared about peace. We all have joy, peace, amen, and, and, and joy. God has designed each other of us to help someone to find joy to find healing, to find comfort. Hallelujah. The church is called for that ministry. And God designed us to need each other to share the gospel. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, not in word of grace, some. <laughs> Not in the family of word of grace, by faith, hallelujah, but encourage one another. You know, encourage, encouraging one another is a ministry. It's a ministry of exhorting one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So I just want to share with you some scriptures regarding fellowship and, uh, you know, uh, church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. So we are in one body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the fourth thing about the bread, the living bread that satisfies is the bread represents salvation. So Sister Sita's Frutus from uh, America, they are in America with Brother Sal, but they join us. So gabi po sa kanila ngayon. And we have one here, uh, Teacher Karine from Canada. So gabi din siguro sa kanya ngayon. So bread represents salvation. In the act of communion, like Sister Sita shared kanina, Jesus chose uh, bread to represent the sacrifice of his body. Every time you eat the bread and drink the wine or juice, it is a reminder or how much God loves you. By sending Jesus and for what he has done on the cross, he died and gave his life for us. The truth is, no one is outside of Jesus' reach. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Therefore, 
Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. And in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No one goes to the Father except through me. He is. Jesus is our mediator. He's the bridge going to the Father. Amen? But, he, but who is commanded to go and preach the gospel? Sino kaya? It is the church, the believers. Amen? The disciples of Jesus Christ. Tayo to. Tayo yung kinakaman and for, to, have a, to do the Great Commission. So in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, in New Living Translation, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Meron nga yung mga expression ng mga, mga bata ngayon, parang, oh, sasama ka ba? G, ganun lang sila, G. Yung pala ibig sabihin ng game. So, hindi ko pa talaga eh, no? Kala ko, go. Eto dapat ang sagot ng mga Kristiyano dito. Sabi po, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. G! Amen! We are, G tayo dito, G na G tayo dito. Why? You must not be ashamed to preach the good news because He promised that I will be with you always. Even until the end of the world. Because the Holy Spirit is with us. Amen? So in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So if you are not, if you are not Jew, we are, you are called Gentile. So us are Gentiles, you know. Gospel here means good news. Many Christians nowadays are applying the word gospel in so different ways. Paul announces, I am not ashamed of the gospel. So we use this word gospel to anything in church meeting, uh, gospel fellowship, gospel concert, you know. We use the word gospel, but not even talk about what Jesus has done. The gospel is about Jesus and what he has done. Amen. What he did for us. It becomes religious and became legalistic when preaching the gospel. Many said they are preaching the gospel, but the message they are announcing is, you're a sinner with the voice. You're going to hell. <laughs> you know, have you heard that kind of, you know? Uh, preachers of the gospel, you know, with condemnation, you know, with passionately, you are gonna burn in hell, you know. When I was growing up with my father, because my father is a church planter, he's a, an evangelist or have a mission church in Palawan, in Colion, which is a leper colony before, but now it's a, a tourist destination. So we, I grew up with this kind of, you know, preaching the crusade, the gospel crusades, preaching the gospel. They said preaching the gospel. But this is really what, you know, maybe um, shocked me and then why I accepted the Lord out of fear. Uh, because I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I'm going to be burned in hell. But this is really true. If you do not accept Jesus, you're going to be burned in hell. But that is not the gospel. The gospel is about the love of God because, and, the, and God sent Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus that, you know, forgives our sins. Hallelujah. So with the screaming, you know, the preachers, with the screaming during the crusade, condemning people, and they said it's the gospel. The gospel doesn't condemn. Amen. And the gospel is not a guilt trip message. It is true that there is heaven and hell. It is true that when they don't believe and accept Jesus, they're going to go to hell. But it is not the gospel. The gospel is the good news, the radical good news that doesn't apply to anything except to what Jesus came to do for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus. Amen. That's the good news. That's the gospel. So what Jesus did for us through his death and resurrection in taking our sins is so radically good news. 
that Jesus paid everything that is not based on your performance anymore. So in those uh, in Paul's time, the religious people, they were offended because it is talking about the good news that you are forgiven, you are cleansed because of what Jesus did, and not based on your performance. You cannot add to that. You do not, you know, you know, you do not earn salvation. It is freely given to us. In Romans 1, 4, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Salvation used in the Bible is not limited to the forgiveness of sins. Yes, it includes forgiveness, but it's much more than that. Same word that is translated as saved many times in the Bible. Saved means in the Greek is zozo, has the basic meaning of rescuing one from great peril. But it also includes in this definition is to protect, keep alive. Preserve life, deliver, heal, be made whole. So in our salvation package, it's not just the, for, the, not just the forgiveness of sin, but it includes healing. Amen? Prosperity, deliverance. Hallelujah. The same word is also translated about delivered, that you can be delivered of demonic things. So the Greek word so-so is literally referring to not only forgiveness of sins, but of also healing of your body, deliverance from Satan, deliverance from depression, from discouragement, and so on and so forth. Prosperity. Basically, salvation is used in the Bible, refers to anything that came as a result of what Jesus did. But it is sad to say the church, for whatever reason today, is broken salvation down only to mean forgiveness of sin. But they do not include the healing of your body. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. That is in your salvation package. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, some believe about healing that God can do it. We believe that God can do it. So if we are get sick and pray and if healing comes, say, praise God. Really, God, God heals, but they never say that it is part of Jesus' atonement. Most Christians took a uh, look at healing, deliverance, pr prosperity, joy, peace as being possible, but just additional to salvation. So when Paul said that I am not ashamed of the good news that Jesus paid it all, it's not based on his performance, it's based on faith in what Jesus did, and he paid it all. This is the power of God unto the forgiveness of sins, the healing of your body, your prosperity, your joy, your hope, your peace, your deliverance, your emotional stability. For him to say something like this, this is so radical. So they didn't preach good news that Jesus has done it all. You know, I, I was reminded of the jingle of one of the of the mall or the one of the biggest stores department stores uh, in the philippines they have you got it all for you you know diba? you got it all for you you know jesus got it all for you already hallelujah you know when you are sometimes i what i was watching x factor you know the contest the contest about their talents and then show me what you got Something like that. And for the believers and for the church, show and speak what you've got. Hallelujah. If you are sick, you are the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is in your salvation package already. Prosperity, you will have no lack. Hallelujah. And it is done by faith. So they believe that God can heal. They believe that God could provide a financial miracle. They believe that if they are depressed and feel discouraged, God could move in their life. But they just don't know for sure that he could because they believe that God's power being demonstrated in their lives is dependent upon their goodness. Whether they prayed, fasted, studied the word, whether they're doing these things, it's not people that doubt God that God can do things. They doubt God's willingness to do it because they know they know in their heart that they haven't done anything. Ay, kulang yung ginawa ko. Hindi ako nakapagbasa ng Bible eh. Kumbaga, kaya hindi ina-answer ni Lord yung prayer ko. So, 
you, you already have. You got it all. He got it all for you. The gospel is the good news that you get what you do not deserve. And you get, and, but you already get what Jesus deserved. That all you need to do is believe and receive. Amen. You have to get out of our self-righteousness and continue trusting in God. This is what Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. The good news about what? Of what Jesus did for us and not what we do for him. The release is the power for forgiveness of sins, healing of your body, prosperity, joy, peace, hope, and everything else. So whatever your, your need is today, whether it's physical, emotional, relational, spiritual, financial, depend on God to meet that need for you. You can just simply say, give us this day our daily bread. Then trust God to take care of you. Take and eat daily the living bread, Jesus, the bread of life, the living word of God that only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Your living word yesterday, today, and forever is Jesus alone. So I will just close with a, with the beginning verse that I shared. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 to 25, for all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Hallelujah. This is the word that was preached to you. Go and preach the good news to every people. G, G Putajan. Every nation for the gospel is the power of God that brings salvation. Preach the salvation package. Jesus, the living bread that satisfies a hungry soul and saves a dying world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, everyone. I hope you are encouraged with this message for today. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for, um, for your presence, Panginoon. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is manifested, Lord God, in the, in the speaking of your word. Lord, we thank you that we will live, Lord God, in your promises, Lord. We will continue to believe that you are the living bread that satisfies only you can satisfy our soul. Lord, that all the words, Lord God, that is shared today, Lord, let it, Lord God, seek into our hearts, Lord God. And Lord God, that we will meditate it day and night, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for increasing us, Lord God, from the inside out. We thank you, Lord God, that we are blessed to be a blessing, Lord God, not just today, but every day, Lord God, we will take the dose of the bread, of the bread of life, that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everyone. And thank you, Ati Jen. Thank you so much for the word. Yes, it is truly God that He only can satisfy us. Praise you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. And now um, we will proceed sa ating, ano, sa ating announcement. Po. So we encourage everyone po to join us in our Face Seeker every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, in Connect Group po, you can every Sunday, uh, please connect po kay Ate Jen for uh, the link. And for the young people, we have our live group every Sunday. Ayan. So we encourage po na participate po tayo sa ating mga events. Music. 